sao in ring shring ka e la ring asang ka hala ring ta ka la ring sao ain kling ring shring Namaste. So this is really going to be the last video for a while. I'm going on retreat, going up in the forest in the mountains of Sri Lanka, and probably you won't see another video for like six weeks, at least, you know. That is contingent on my having anything to say. <laughs> But things usually come up during these retreats, so I probably will. I just don't want to be bothered by, how can I say, like intellectual work, screen work, uh, computer work. I just want to be out there in the woods with the birds and trees and animals swimming in the, in the stream. <laughs> And sitting, sitting with the monks and like that. And the reason for this is, not only do I usually take a retreat at the end of the year, a break, or uh, during spring especially, which is now coming on really strong after the long rainy season that we had. Uh, but there's more to it than that. There's a longer, a longer change that's playing out here. And I think after noticing it and confirming it, that it's something worth sharing. And that is, well, let me back up a little bit. <laughs> My whole life, I have been an avid musician and because my mother was a tantrika, my mother and father, but especially my mother, <laughs> I was always very much involved with sexuality and like that. And of course, religion, bhakti, devotion, all kinds of beauty. Uh, these were the mainstay of my life. These were the, the things that I turned to for shelter. Because as you know, human life on planet Earth is very challenging, to say the least. Uh, even for someone born in actually opulent circumstances, even though from the social point of view, we were lower middle class, actually from the global point of view, we had all kinds of advantages. Uh, it's like if you were playing baseball and you found yourself magically on second base. <laughs> you know, so it's a big advantage. And I would have to say that in the intervening time, many years of being on the spiritual path, I was able to advance to third base. <laughs> And I had a lot of help. Uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, beings on my team giving me all kinds of assistance now that I look back on it. And finally, recently, I have come in contact with a source of beauty that makes all the others music, sex, the beauty of math and science, even the beauty of meditation, emptiness, pale in comparison. And what is that? That's the beauty of Shakti, the beauty of the goddess, that she has revealed herself to me in a very special way. And what that means is that I have seen, I have realized 
that whatever there is that I could call I, myself, is actually nothing but her. <laughs> See, she is all form. She is Saguna Brahman. So all the forms of this world are actually her. Her energy, herself, well, she is energy. Shakti means the force, you know, may the force be with you or whatever. May Shakti be in your heart. Well, she's already in your heart. She's the life energy. She is the body. She is Kundalini. The power of sex, the power of life, reproduction, genetics, the intelligence, biological and intuitive intelligence. She is the one who keeps the body running while we're asleep off somewhere else. She is the uh, basis of everything that we love and hold dear. Uh, so all these things, all these beauties that were the, uh, the nectar that kept me going through life, through all the difficulties, through all the betrayals and downturns and all this, you know, the stuff that happens in life. Uh, this was her. The beauty of music as Goddess Saraswati, uh, Maha Saraswati Shakti. She is one of the Shaktis. And then the beauty of sex, that's Kundalini Shakti. The beauty of mathematics, see, of, of power, of money, whatever kind of beauty you can find in this world. The beauty of emotions, of art. You see, this is all her. Oh, and it goes deeper too. The beauty of the mind, of beautiful thoughts, mathematics, uh, the mathematics of music, especially the uh, swaras and the, the beautiful emotions that these swaras release transcendental emotions. These are also her. Huh? She is the form of rasa. Huh? So these are all her qualities. And even the consciousness. Consciousness is also Shakti. It's called Chit Shakti, will. Icha Shakti. You see? So all the things that we value, all the things that we see beauty in, all the things that motivate us and bring us through this life, huh, they are actually Shakti. In the moment of orgasm, one experiences Shakti directly, Kundalini. But she can also reveal herself in a more long-term way, a more persistent way. The uh, bliss of orgasm only lasts a few seconds or a few minutes if you know how to prolong it. But the bliss of contacting Shakti is eternal. It's however, however long you want to stay in touch with her, well, she's available for that. Because ultimately, what are we? Shivoham, aham brahmasmi, I am. Therefore, I am Brahman. Because I am conscious, or not even conscious, aware. I have the potential for consciousness. But even without an object, which is required for consciousness, I am aware. I am aware that I am aware. I am aware that I am. 
And that presence, that knowledge of one's own existence, that's Brahman. So deep down in the core, at the root, at the source, we are Brahman, all of us. We are Shiva, Sadashiva, Paramashiva. That's who we are. And Shakti exists to serve Shiva. So we all get to desire what we want, especially at the moment of death. I just want to show a little video here showing the orbital period uh, of an elliptical uh, orbital body. So what we call I, the self, is actually simply a construct of thoughts, a constellation of ideas, abstractions, sankhara, in orbit around a highly massive black hole that we call Shiva or Brahman. And when we leave this body, we move towards perihelion. And by the time we get to Shiva, we're moving so fast that we don't have the ability to change our course. But when we're out at the extremity, at the aphelion, then we have sufficient momentum, sufficient energy, sufficient delta V, to use the technical term, to change our course. And this is called sadhana. So if we use sadhana correctly, we can change our orbit from an elliptical orbit to a direct path to Brahman. And this is called liberation. So how do we do that? Well, the best way, the way that has had the greatest results for me in my long life of trying everything <laughs> is simply remembrance of Shakti, remembrance of the goddess through her names, through especially her mantra, the Maha Shodashi Mantra, Shodashakshara Mantra, the 16-syllable mantra. And we've offered initiation into this mantra, basically to anyone who wants it, but very few people have responded. Those who have are very pleased. <laughs> so this is the ultimate teaching. This is what we feel is the best medicine for everybody. This is, in our experience anyway, the, the most powerful teaching, the most efficacious and powerful mantra. And so we, we wholeheartedly recommend that you should take this up. And we've given all the instructions here. I even made a series, a whole series of videos on it. You can find those and watch them. And please take that teaching to heart because it's the best thing that I've ever found, the most beautiful thing I've ever appreciated. It makes all the other beauties like nothing. <laughs> I mean, just consider, for example, music, okay? For, to make beautiful music is a real pleasure, but in order to do that, you have to practice. You have to practice a lot and you have to keep up those skills. You have to maintain them. And as you get older, of course, <laughs> the body, the mind, everything gets less sharp. So it becomes more and more difficult to create that beauty. And if one is relying on that, if one is attached to it, then it becomes very difficult. And the same goes with the beauty of love, sex, uh, or any of the other beauties, power, wealth, knowledge, even renunciation, becomes more and more difficult as you get older. But there's no difficulty at all in remembering the goddess by her mantra. 
Aum. String ring kling ein sau. Aum. Ring string. Ka e i la ring. Hasaka hala ring. Saka la ring. Sau ein kling ring string. See, and as I do that, I can see her in front of me in a form of light. You know. So she is with us always. And she is actually our self. We are one with her because she is everything that we could identify as being ourselves. So this is the ultimate conclusion of all these researches, all these practices, all these studies. And you should take this up because in my experience, this is the highest blessing. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.